So the plan for today is to turn this into this. Okay, charging stand for all of the electronic junk in the house. Starts as these two pieces of walnut. Uh, these guys have been milled S6S, means they're square and flat on uh, all the available sides. This piece right here is 3 8 of an inch thick. And this guy is just a hair over three quarter. It actually measures closer to 800 thou. Now the way this stand is designed, the, the heavier, thicker stuff is gonna make up the base to give it enough weight to be able to support all that stuff stacked up on it. And it is also the upright post that goes up the back so that I have enough meat to be able to dado in the thinner shelves and still have enough strength in the support post. I'm gonna miter the corners on the rails that make up the base, and then I'm gonna cut a rabbit for the top of the base to drop into. Honestly, the most complicated part of this whole thing is laying out the parts on the wood. This being walnut, it can be very beautiful, but it also has quite a bit of sapwood running along the edges of it. Now, I don't really mind the look of the sapwood. I kind of like the contrast when the whole thing is finished, but I do want to plan where that sapwood lines up. I need a 10 inch wide piece for the top of that base unit. And from the edge of this knot to the start of this guy right here, happens to be 10 and change inches. So I've got a real nice clean section of walnut right here I'm going to use that as the top of the base. The thinner rail stock that makes up the sides of the base, I'm going to take out of the top section here above the knot. There's heartwood, sapwood on either side of that, but there's plenty of good walnut right in the middle for me to get all of those strips. Now the thinner stock that I'm going to make all the shelves out of has this lighter banding on both sides of it. And actually you can see on the bottom edge down here, it's, it's pretty heavy in some places. I need the full width of this board. This is essentially final width dimension. So I'm not gonna be able to get completely around that stuff, but I don't need the entire length of it. And the very top shelf on there is only five inches wide. So what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna be able to take a shelf, the short shelf, skip a bit, shelf, shelf, and I should end up with pieces that are at least relatively consistent. Okay, before I break this down, let me show you what I mean by trying to get these things the same. I set up my stop block here for my five inch dimension. Three of the shelves are five by seven. The top shelf is five by five. So I'm not gonna move this. I'm gonna use it to cut the other one perfectly square. But I have to pick which one of these four I'm gonna cut those extra two inches off of. So what I'm doing is I'm going through them. And as you can sort of see, these three, are a pretty good match. They have a little bit of sapwood on one end and a little bit more on the other end. But this guy right here has a big old hunk of it on the bottom and nothing on the top. So this is the one that I'm gonna cut the two inches off of. And the big sapwood at the bottom kind of matches, but up here at the top, I've got some little knot and pinholes and such things. So that's what I'm gonna cut off. Small change plans here, YouTube. I got to looking at the grain on this thicker stock and I have enough wood to make both the base lid, if that makes any sense, and the upright support out of this piece. But I don't really like the grain that I'm gonna be left with if I cut that big piece out of the middle here. So I'm gonna instead make the top of the base out of the remainder of the thinner 3 8 inch stock. That is gonna mean that the base of this whole thing is gonna be just a little bit lighter than it would have been otherwise, but it's plenty wide enough to have good stability, so I'm not too worried about it. Make my own life a little easier, I'm gonna cut the rabbits in this rail stock before I start cutting all the miters and making a frame out of it. I like using the dado stack for these kinds of rabbits because it lets you sneak up on the two dimensions of the rabbit sort of independently. The height of the dado set is set equal to the thickness of this wood that I'm insetting, you know, plus a skosh to let me flush it up later. Then the other dimension is just to get the rabbit itself square. That's set by the fence, and again, I can use test pieces, and I can sneak up on it, move the fence back and forth, just by thousandths of an inch if need be, until I get it exactly where I want it. The most accurate way I have to cut 45 degree angles on the ends of pieces is to tip the table saw blade. I set it using this, this is the iron piece of my stare at little mini square. And this is a pretty exact 45. So crank the blade up, 
set it against the flat spot, not the teeth, and then put it back down where you need it. All right, I have all of the rail pieces for the base of the unit. So there's a long one in the front, there's the two seven inch long sides. And then there are these two little stub pieces that finish up the miter, make it nice and clean looking from the outside, but leave a gap. That gap is where the upright piece goes that's gonna support all of the shelves. And according to the drawing, this should be four and a half inches. But of course, you know, the way things go, saw curves and uh, off a little bit and whatever, it comes out about a 16th wider than that if I have this base completely square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this oversized and I'm actually gonna rip off of both sides. I wanna try and keep this cathedral grain in the center sort of symmetrical so that it looks like like just this, peaks in the center instead of grain transitioning to peaks. Anyway, I'm gonna cut off the sides of here, but I'm gonna cut it to about maybe four and three quarters and come over here and clamp this whole thing up and see if it's square, and I assume it won't be. So then I'll go back and I'll just, I'll shave this thing down in whisper passes until I get this base exactly square. After this piece is ripped to the correct width, which turned out to be four and a half plus a 30 second, the next step is to cut the dados that go in here to hold all of the shelves. In fact, the very first dado is the top of the box. So I've used my rail pieces to make a mark where that dado is gonna be. And it's real tempting to just make a mark for each one of these dados. After all, they're not super critical. Um, but my thickness of the shelf material is not exactly three eighths. It's a little on the fat side. In fact, I had to dig out the shims for the dado set in order to get the fit that I wanted, what they call a uh, slip fit on these shelves. Anyway, it makes measuring and marking for where every one of these dados needs to be kind of a pain because you have to mark top of the, the dado. So I'm gonna cut one, mark from the top of that, cut one, mark from the top of that. I left this board long, so I'll you know set up my dimensions so that everything works out even by trimming this after all the dados are cut. sub-assembly step, I went ahead and I glued these mitered wing pieces, is what I'm calling them, onto the upright post. That's a giant pain though, because they have the miters cut on these ends. So if you have a doweling jig, the easy thing to do is to just put a couple dowels in here to keep this lined up and straight while you clamp it. I don't have a doweling jig and I didn't want it to be off. So what I did instead is I put these calls on top and bottom to make sure that everything stays nice and flat and lined up while I put these clamps on the ends to actually apply clamp to the glue surface. With the back of the base unit a solid piece now that this glue's dried, it's pretty easy to just tape this mitered box together and see how square it's gonna come out and more importantly, see what the exact dimensions are for the lid that I have to cut out of this piece. And for the insert, it looks like we need nine and three eighths by six and three eighths. I'm gonna end up taking that essentially out of this top corner of the board. Like I've been doing all along, I'm trying to keep the grain you know, pretty and symmetrical. So I wanna cut away this blotchy section down here at the bottom, and I wanna try and make the sap wood about the same width on uh, both sides here. So top left it is. With the last piece of the base cut out, it's time for glue up. Blue tape actually makes really good clamps for miters. Just give it a nice tight tug when you're sealing them up. You will need a couple of clamps to put final pressure on this. They're gonna have to come from both directions to keep from pulling your miters out of square. Just go easy with them and it'll work out fine. With the base all glued up, I can start sticking the shelves in the dados. This is just a dry fit to sanity check on the overall dimensions and look of the thing to see if it's what I really want before I start finish prep and glue it together. And I'm pretty happy with it, but there are two changes I wanna make. When you look at the thing straight on, it has a little bit of a, of a pyramid shape. The base is wider than these shelves, which is wider than this shelf. 
But when you turn it sideways, like even though the shelves aren't all completely seated in their dados, you see that it's, it's pretty much just straight up and down. It's a straight line up the back, and it's one step into the shelves in the front, but then all the rest of them are the same. When it turns out, this top shelf doesn't need to be this big anyway. My phone, which is the biggest one in the house, doesn't come anywhere near filling up the, the full shelf. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match this step back from base to the first shelf from the second shelf to the top one. And that step back is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna cut an inch and a half off off of this shelf. I like the look of that a lot better, except that now I think maybe this is too tall. I only took off about a half an inch, but I, I think the thing looks a whole lot better that way. I did a round over using my quarter inch bit. I kind of wish I had a one eighth for the shelves, but I came back and finessed everything with hand sanding anyway. I got lucky. I could start with 120 grit on this walnut because it was in pretty good shape. Now, normally on a pretty species of wood like walnut, I would just go real simple, grab a quality varnish of some kind, satin, maybe semi-gloss, straight on the wood, buff it out with some steel wool or some thousand grit paper in between coats and call it a day. But when I did that on my sample piece, I noticed that for whatever reason, this particular walnut board has just ridiculously open pores. And so it takes way too many coats of urethane to get it leveled out. It starts to kind of look plasticky. Plan B is over here on the other side of the board. This is the Watco Danish oil. Um, what you can do is you can put this down, let the first layer cure, and then put a second layer down and start to sand it out with some 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. What that does is it uses a mixture of oil and sawdust from your own piece as a pore filler. Once that's dry, then you have a nice level surface that has the added benefit of the, the way oil makes the grain pop and the wood shine. It's just kind of cool looking. Um, anyway, you can then get a coat of varnish on that in just one or two coats and have plenty of film. Tell you, the other thing I love about these oils too is that there couldn't, there couldn't be anything easier to apply. All right, it's been a couple of days, so I have two good solid coats of this stuff on here. The first one I just let soak in, and the second one I sanded with 400 grit wet dry paper to do a pore fill on here. And I have a glass smooth surface as a result of that. I find wipe on varnishes to be about the easiest to get on evenly, especially with the raking video light I have available to me. Once that coat was dry, I came back with mineral spirits and steel wool and smoothed it back down to that glass surface I had after the pore fill. With the first coat on there, I could do the final glue up and get the shelves in there. I didn't want to do final finish before I finished assembly, just in case I dinged it up with these clamps. Okay, she's all glued up. Got some vent holes in the back for uh, letting air and cords in. Got the shelves in there. And I have the top coat drying. Did a switcheroo on you here. The wife decided that she wanted a gloss top coat on here because the credenza that it's going to sit on has a gloss finish. So out with the satin armor seal and in with the gloss wipe on uh, Watco. It's always best if you have the option to stay with finishes from one manufacturer because that way you know the solvents and the resins and everything are 100% are compatible with each whatever you've got on there already. All in all, this has been a pretty fun and easy project and definitely something that we needed. And I think I made a good choice keeping this just to the gadgets that get used all of the time instead of absolutely everything that we need to plug in. I might want to add some little clips or something to hold these cords when the devices are not plugged in, but that's going to have to wait for another day. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, stay safe, YouTube.